before this hearing and before Senator Kitchen put her bills in, I really had no idea, as a senator myself, that this powdered alcohol was out there. And when I had talked to people back home, and then at least, what are you doing tonight? I said, I'm going down to a hearing to talk about powdered alcohol. They're like, powdered alcohol? Are you serious? So why don't we try to say, what is it? Like, we have a camera. Powdered alcohol would definitely increase the use of alcohol abuse in Pennsylvania. It is a powder is designed, despite what the manufacturers say is their intention, their intention may be different from how people are going to use it. They're going to use it to hide their drinking. And if someone is hiding their drinking, probably means they shouldn't be drinking. And it's probably going to be students in class, people at work, people who have drinking problems, who are using it to hide their drinking from their friends and families. Now, our research shows that in 1985, Delaware adds the definition of powdered alcohol to its existing statutory language regulating alcoholic beverages. In 1994, Alaska prohibits the sale of powdered alcohol for human consumption. In 2014, Louisiana, South Carolina, and Vermont enact legislation prohibiting the sale of powdered alcohol. In early 2015, Georgia, Indiana, North Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, Virginia, and Washington State all prohibit the sale of powdered alcohol. Maryland and Minnesota enacted one-year bans on powdered alcohol until its potential for abuse can be determined. Colorado, Michigan, and New Mexico added powdered alcohol to their existing definitions of alcohol in order to regulate. To also work uh, with uh, uh, the passage of bills here in Pennsylvania where we would have the ability of the Secretary of, of Health um, certify certain substances before the federal government actually makes it into a certain category. So this way we would always be able to keep up with not just synthetic drugs but also synthetic alcohol. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share my thoughts. It's very painful to, when a kid comes up and tells me their parents are alcoholics and, and the abuse that they're experiencing from those parents, and that now that we have this <coughs> new product that they want to bring to the state, it's, it's just one more problem we're going to have. This was called to my attention by my staff attorney. It really caused some concern. And one of the main reasons that it, it caused my concern because this product is tasteless, it's odorless, and virtu virtually unrecognizable um, so that if a, a teenager uh, has it, you know, an underage drinker has it, they basically can transport it into their home into school and it makes it almost impossible to uh, be able to track it and I think that we should offer as much protection as we can to our young people. I understand that we live in a free society and we can uh, sell or we can manufacture that which is legal but sometimes we have to think of who will get this product even when we are thinking that or, or making it for someone else. So that's uh, really one of the main reasons why we have this push. So he has the duty to keep potentially dangerous products off of our shelves. The bottom line is that there are significant concerns about the ease with which powdered alcohol could be concealed, transported, and abused because it is a lightweight powder, as you mentioned, and is easy to carry in packets. I'm a captain with the Temple University Police Department. Um, I'm over the patrol operations, so the men and women um, on the streets dealing with uh, alcohol issues on our campus and outside of our campus. I've been with Temple for 23 years, so I've seen a lot of things change center attention. Um, but our concern, obviously, is uh, alcohol in general. In four months this spring, we had almost 300 incidents with alcohol related to our students that we dealt with. Almost 90 of those were transports to the hospital because of binge drinking, binge drinking um, and, and students that couldn't handle the intake of 
alcohol. Uh, a concern right away is the concealability. Uh, we try very hard to keep alcohol out of our residence halls. Um, and that's a challenge in itself when you're dealing with cans and bottles. Uh, something like this in a pouch, how would you ever know now that students are bringing alcohol into the residence halls? Also, the tasteless and odorless issue is a concern. Um, uh, people won't know they're drinking alcohol. They could be at a party, it could be offered as uh, food punch, and there's alcohol in it. So s some students may not even realize they're drinking alcohol. It's just such an epidemic with college-age students' alcohol alone. I can't imagine introducing another form of it um, that they can ingest um, uh, to, uh, to, to get drunk and, 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 and carry on. I, th I just think it would be very hard for us to uh, patrol and enforce uh, this type of alcohol. The used drug that we have in the world is alcohol. And I just graduated two kids from Penn State. I've been to a number of football games, and I can absolutely tell you what those college kids, what those college kids are going to do with this stuff. And they're not just going to put one package into that one glass of water. They're going to put two or three of them. And uh, my concern, and I've been following this closely since last year, when it showed up one day, and they pulled it right away because of the wild claims that were on the website. I've been following it, but I also follow uh, the big picture with all the opioids and synthetic drugs that, that are uh, arriving, and why do we need to keep adding something else to this plethora that is so easy and so convenient for our younger people to get? And uh, when I get a chance, I'll, I'll talk about a slogan that I uh, hope that everybody that ever takes a class with me remembers, and that is, when it comes to abuse and addiction, the only safe drug is a new drug. Um, alcohol is, yes, I cannot tell you how distressed it is for me because I know what kids do. I know what is happening not only in the inner city. I live in North Philadelphia. Then I know what is happening in my neighborhood, but I know what happening in every high school. You know, kids talk. And having a substance like this that is odorless, that is, you don't cannot do anything to recognize it, it will just destroy, you know, uh, our youth. It will destroy your society the way we, we are. Now, I have some serious concerns over powdered alcohol, especially its potential impact on underage drinking. Because it's tasteless and odorless, manufacturers can add flavor or color to entice young consumers to their product. In my view, alcohol represents the same type of dangers as synthetic drugs. These derivative substances allow users to intensify the product's potency beyond the manufacturer's intended concentrations. To her credit, Senator Kitchen has openly, timelessly, again and again, expressed her concerns. For example, she rightly points out that alcohol is easy to conceal, easy for minors to obtain, and could even be placed in someone's drink unknowingly, intensifying the effect. Senator Kitchen has introduced legislation that will ban the sale, possession, and consumption of powdered al alcohol here in Pennsylvania. This would add the force of law to the Liquor Control Board's decision to prohibit the sale of alcohol in liquor stores. For today's discussion, I hope we can discuss Senator Kitchen's bills in greater detail, but please don't feel confined to just be talking about those bills. We're interested in your thoughts and ideas on powdered alcohol. Whether you share our views or Senator Kitchen's views or not, perhaps uh, someone believes that powdered alcohol should be legal. Tell me why and regulate it. But please don't hesitate to share your thoughts on this powdered alcohol issue. This is your opportunity to give us and the community your input on this. It's a very controversial issue. So I thank the panelists. Senator Kitchen's legislation really is uh, highlighted here because uh, you know the, the, if that's where the yeah. board's going to be going, and it seems like that is. And then you know not only is it important to ban it because of what we have right now, but the future. Different different issues and concerns. I'm finding so many, so many different different mentality today. It seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Um, um,
so, so, I'm ready for I'm this, ready challenge. For this ready. challenge, and I was built, and I was built for this. I think that, I think we, that all we all have a purpose in life, and mine's and mine's going to take on a task that most of, that most of back away from, that impossible, that people say is impossible, I see 